Hello once again, this is Jennifer McGuire and thank you so much for stopping by my video. So today I thought I'd share with you a fun way to use your layering dies. Layering dies are a favorite of mine because the results are beautiful. However, the price point is higher on layering dies, so I wanted to be sure I share lots of looks for using them. I have lots for you today great for one layer cards. And then in my next video, I'll share even more ways to get new looks from your layering dies. But today is all about using your layering dies as stencils. This is a great way to get a smooth look and also incorporate your inks. I have loads of examples for you. And the best part is this technique results in two or more cards from one go, which is fantastic. And I have many variations of the technique. Let's get started with this example. For this card and many throughout this video, I'll be using this basic die set from Birch Press. This has a basic butterfly. It has a solid outline, the body and antenna of the butterfly in two sizes, and then lots of detailed die cuts so you can layer it. At the end of this video, I'll show you a couple cards using just this die set. However, before that, I'll team up this basic set with a few other layering butterfly die sets. This is one example, the Eloquent Butterfly Layering Die Set. I love the detail in these layering die sets, and if you've watched my videos, I've shared many different ways to use layering die sets. They do have a higher price point because there are three dies included in the set instead of one. However, there are many ways you can use them, and you can use them quickly if you prefer. I will link to a layering die playlist if you want to check out other videos and ideas. But let's use these as a stencil today. For this stenciled layering die technique, I start by cutting one of the dies from white cardstock. And this is towards the bottom center of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. That's the size I want to use on the card. I also cut the three layers of the butterfly die set I just showed you. It's beautiful layered in white, but we're gonna use it creatively today. I'm taping this negative space onto another piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Basically, I'm kind of creating a stencil here with a solid open butterfly. You can use any of the three dies to create that. Now I'm lightly applying ink into this opening. It doesn't matter what ink you use here, I'm using Altenew ink and Gina K blending brushes. The trick is you want to apply this very light for this step. I'm applying a very light amount of pink ink towards the top of the butterfly and a very light amount of purplish blue ink towards the bottom. Those are the colors I'll focus on in this video. And I did a tiny amount of purple towards the center. Here you can get a peek at how light that ink application is. Okay, so now I'm gonna tape it back closed and now it's time to add those layered butterfly die cuts as stencils. So I'm putting in the layered butterfly die cut that has the largest opening. This would be the top die cut if you were layering the die cuts. Over this, I'm applying a medium amount of ink. I'm using the same colors I used on the solid butterfly, just a little heavier handed. So it becomes a little bit darker in these openings. I just pop this butterfly die cut into the opening that I created on that stencil that we taped onto our paper. Okay, now we can remove that butterfly. I was just holding it there and check out the results we have so far. Now I'm going in with the second layer of the butterfly. So this is the die cut that would be second in line if you were layering them together. I'm putting in the same color of inks, but this time a pretty heavy amount of ink. So I'm being very generous with these colors. You can move to a darker color, but there's no sense. You might as well just apply more of the ones you've done before and you can see the layering starting to happen. Now we're coming in with the third layer die cut. This one is the one that has the least amount of openings and would be the last die cut, the one in the back, if you were gluing them together. Now I'm applying a really heavy amount of ink, or you can switch to a darker color of ink of the same. Look at the layering that you get. Such a smooth and blended look. We'll come back to this in a moment, but remember, we had three die cuts from the three layering dies that we used as stencils. We can now use those again for another card. So these layering die cut pieces can be used for a second card. I'll show you those in a minute, but now let's go back to that smooth inked piece. 
I wanted to add some texture to this because it's very smooth and I love texture. So I thought we could do some dry embossing. So I still have the stencil that we created on the front of it and our inked open butterfly there. I'm rubbing a little bit of water on the back since we're going to do some dry embossing. You can skip this if you want, you only need to do a little bit, but it helps to keep the paper from cracking. Now I'll take one of those butterfly layering dies. I'm taking the one that was the first, the one with the biggest openings, and I'm popping it right into that stencil that we added on top. I'll tape it in place, and now I'm running it through my die cut machine. Now with the die cut machine, I'm using an embossing pad. This is my Spellbinders Platinum 6, and this is an embossing pad or embossing mat. I'll lay the paper and die on top of that, and then the blue embossing plate. This will cause the die to make an impression or emboss instead of cutting. Many die cut machines can do this technique. You just need to follow the instructions. I usually use my Spellbinders Platinum 6 because it's easy to bring into the video camera for you to see. So now this die has made an impression into that inking that we've done. I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see it. See how the detail is impressed into it? Gives it the look of texture without much dimension. And remember, the best part of this technique is we end up with enough pieces for two or more cards. We have the layering butterfly die cuts that were inked when we use them as stencils, and we have the piece that we inked and then did the dry embossing on. Let's use that dry emboss piece first. Here I have the tailored expressions diamond plaid embossing plate. I'm putting on the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half top folding pink note card, and I ran it through my die cut machine. I now have this inked piece that I dry embossed that I trimmed down and I'm adding to the front of the card. For sentiment, I'm using the Photo Play Thanks stamp set. The cool thing about this stamp set is there's a coordinating die set available too and you can use them together or separately and they have them in lots of themes. I encourage you to check them out, they're brilliant. I stamped one of the sentiments on a thin strip of white cardstock and added that onto our butterfly. I also added a butterfly body and antenna using silver glitter cardstock and the basics butterfly die set I showed you earlier. So here's a look at the completed card. Now if you look closely you'll see that stencil detail and the impression that we made by embossing with the die. I also have the pierce pattern on the note card itself just to add a little bit of interest. So with this technique I was able to use layering die cuts to create a smooth look. Now I added a lot of layers, but if you wanted to, you could keep this a one layer card. Now remember, I still have the inked die cuts that we used as stencils left over, and I created a pretty quick and easy card using those. Now since I wanted to keep the colorful layered butterfly in focus, I want to keep the background just white, but add some texture to it. So I decided to use a new background die from A Pocket Full of Happiness, which is a newer company. Love this die and their unique products. I also used a sentiment from the Honey Bee Bitty Buzzword stamp set. There are coordinating dies that go with this. This is an excellent stamp set. Many sentiments that you can build up. The nice thing is there are shadow dies included in the die set that you can team up with the stamped words or with the individual word dies that are included in the set. So you can use them together or separately, really well done. And I'll be using it in this video and a future one too. I also really like the size of these sentiments. Now for this card, I wanted to stamp friend with black ink onto a white die cut. So I die cut the shadow of the word friend, and then I'm keeping the negative space and putting it into my stamping tool. It's on top of a sticky mat. Now I'm laying the stamp for the word friend right in the center of it, lining it up. Then I put the die cut into the negative space and the sticky mat will hold it there. I now stamp that with black ink and I'll get great precision this way. It's easier to stamp onto the pre-cut die cut instead of stamping and then die cutting it out. Now I made it so my butterfly hung off the side of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. So it didn't fit into a regular envelope. So I'm taking a five by seven envelope and trimming it down. I'm cutting about a half inch from each side of this. This is one of my favorite ways to create a custom envelope. And I'll show you more examples, examples of this in the future. 
I like to cut the flap of the envelope kind of at an angle as it originally was. Now we can open up the envelope and put new adhesive down the sides. You can use liquid adhesive or tape for this, anything that is strong. Just make sure that you cut the envelope to be a bit bigger than your finished card so there's room to add that adhesive. So now we have an envelope that fits this card perfectly. The card is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, but you can see the butterfly hangs off the side. The word hello is also from that Biddy Buzzwords Honey Bee stamp set. You can also see I added some silver glitter paper behind the butterfly and for the body. And that little bit of silver glitter paper really adds a lot to this. I didn't have to add any gems or anything else. Lots of shine to it. You can also see that tone on tone white background that I created with the pocket full of happiness background dye. White on white backgrounds or any neutral on neutral backgrounds are great when you have a colorful focal point on your card, but still want to add more texture. Let's do another example of using layered die cuts as stencils. In this case, I use them to create three butterflies on the slimline card. All of them are very smooth. Looks like there's a lot of texture, but there isn't thanks to this trick of using the die cuts as stenciled. And I have lots of leftover die cuts to use for additional cards. This time I'm using the Birch Press Glimmer Butterfly dies. Again, there are three dies that layer together nicely, just with a little bit of a different look than the one we used on the last example. Here I have a white note card that's about four inches wide by about eight and a half inches tall. I also cut a piece of white cardstock to the same size and cut three butterflies from that. So again, we're using this as a stencil on our card. This is the same thing we did on the last card. This time there are three butterflies instead of one. Okay, so I'll take our first die cut. This is the one with the biggest openings, the most detail, the one that would be on top if you were to glue all the die cuts together. I pop that into one of the openings. Now I'll mask off the others. I could die cut three of those and put them into the three openings and ink them all up at once. But I was trying to use the same die cuts for each of the openings. It's totally up to you. Now remember, since I'm starting with the first die cut, I apply a light amount of ink. Last time I applied a super light amount of ink into the solid opening first. I tried to skip that this time. I'll end up adding it later. So I put some yellow ink towards the top of the butterfly wings and some pink ink towards the bottom. Again, I'm using Altenew ink just because there are many lovely colors, but you could use any inks you want. I think dye inks really work well for this. Again, I'm using Gina K blending brushes, but you could use any inking tool you're comfortable with. All right, so there's the first application over the first die cut. Now I'm coming in with the second die cut. This is the one that would be in the middle if you were to layer them together. It has slightly smaller openings. I'm applying the same ink colors but heavier handed, or you can switch to slightly darker ink colors of the same family. I'm sticking with pinks, corals, and yellows and oranges for this card. You can do whatever blending you want. You can make each butterfly different colors if you prefer. Now I'm coming in with the last die cut. This is the one that would be in the back if you were to glue them together with the smallest amount of opening. This time I'm applying a heavy amount of ink or a darker color of ink. This will be your darkest layer and add the tiniest amount of detail to this stenciled butterfly that you're doing. All right, so now when I remove this, you'll see the beautiful stenciled results. Super fun and very different than if you were to layer die cuts. Now, if you look closely at this, you'll see that the outline or the details of this stenciled image is white. I wanted that to match the butterfly but be lighter. So I'm using the same colors of ink and just going over the whole thing with a light amount of ink. In my last example, I did this first. I thought I'd try to skip it on this one, but I decided to add it in the end. So there you can kind of see what the butterfly would look like. Now it's time to do the other two butterflies in the exact same way. I was going to reuse the same die cuts. But I looked at those die cuts and layered together, they're beautiful as is, so I want to keep those and die cut fresh new white ones. That way I'll have lots of die cuts left over to make additional cards. So I could have done all three at once, now I'm just doing the bottom two at once, but I wasn't sure of that in the beginning. But that's something to keep in mind. 
Okay, once I'm done doing the same inking for the other two butterflies, I can remove that stencil and look at the results we get. Super smooth. We could ink the little body of the butterflies and then stamp a sentiment and have a smooth one layer card. But I added instead die cut glitter butterfly bodies in antenna and then stamped a sentiment. So this is a very uh, non-dimensional card if that's something that you prefer. I did not do the embossing with the die like I did last time. I kept the smooth, but the option is there. The sentiment is from this great Lawn Fawn Happy Hug stamp set. Really cute images and very happy sentiments. And I thought this sentiment worked well with the butterflies. This card fits great into a slimline envelope. And remember, it really doesn't matter what size your card is, as long as it fits in an envelope. And this ends up being about four by eight and a half inches. Now remember I have those inked layered butterflies left over. Here's the three cards that I made with them. These were quick to pull together. I kept them very simple. Now this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. The background I did white on white die cuts once again using this great picket fence negative sparks die. It doesn't actually cut the oval in the center so you can put anything there and it works great for the butterfly. I love that background die. I also added a Simon Says Stamp pre-printed sentiment strip. So this is comes as is. You just cut out the sentiment that you want and it's black with white letter. So it really stands out on there. And of course I added some pearls to the wings just for some detail. And these are Trinity Stamps Something New White Pearls. Here's the second card using those inked butterfly die cuts that we used for the stencil technique. This card is six and a quarter by three and a quarter inches, so it's mini slim line. I am loving this size and it doesn't require extra postage. Now the die that I used on the background of this one, there's lots of detail to it, is from Crafty Muraki, which has beautiful background dies. This is a slim line die, but I was able to use it for a mini slim line card. I'm a big fan of any die that just adds piercing detail in the background. And then for a sentiment, I use the Memory Box Birthday Mail Posh Script die set. I've used this one before and I like it because it's a fun alternative to just a traditional happy birthday message. Again, this card is about six and a quarter by three and a quarter inches. So it fits in a mini slimline envelope and I'll link to my favorite source below. The third card here is also that same size, but I cut the note card short so the butterfly could hang off the edge and still fit in the envelope. I used the same background die to add detail. And then I used the Honey Bee Bitty Buzzwords die set. So I cut the shadow from white and the word thanks itself from black glossy. Very simple card, but because the butterfly hangs off the edge, it has a little interest and still fits in the mini slimline envelope. Now I will admit I did some experimenting before I shot the video to try out this technique. So I had lots of inked layered butterfly die cuts and I thought I'd show you what I did with those cards. Now remember how I said I have an extras drawer where I keep my leftover die cuts? Well I put them to use on this card and the next one. See that white die cut in the background with the little pearls on it? I actually had that leftover from a previous video and I had it in my extras drawer and thought it would be great behind this butterfly. Now I cut that white die cut from the Scrappy Tails Assorted Leafs die, cut it from white cardstock and added some white pearls to the center. It was a great backdrop for this leftover layered inked butterfly die cut. I again added the Honey Bee Bitty Buzzwords Thanks die. So I layered that with white and black cardstock and I added it to a soft gray background. So that background cardstock is Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock, which is a fun alternative to white. Now I really like that white die cut with the pearls behind our butterfly, so I thought I'd do another. I had a second in my extras drawer. So this time I have a card that is five and a half inches tall and about three and three quarter inches wide. I added a layered inked butterfly that I had left over from experimenting with this technique. And I have it hanging off the edge so it still fits in the envelope. I again used a leftover from the Scrappy Tails Assorted Leaves Die. That's a white die cut in the background with little pearls on it. I used the same background slimline die that I showed you earlier, but this time on a light pink cardstock. And I stamped You're Amazing on a white cardstock strip and added it on top. 
So I've already shown you many different ways to use butterfly dies in a card. Different techniques, some are smooth, some are layered, different sizes, different themes. It's really fun to see how many ways you can stretch them to get different looks. It's a good way to get more value out of the products you purchase. By the way, the sentiment on this one is from the Ink on 3 Here For You stamp set, which is a small one with great sentiments. Okay, let's do another die set example. Last time I used dies to create a stenciled layered look. This time I'm going to do a combination of both, a little bit of stenciling and a little bit of die cutting, just to show you can get many different looks. I'm using this new birch press die set. There are the three dies included there on the top. One of them, the middle layer, adds this great detail to it that I love. So I die cut that from white cardstock and I'm adding it to the top of a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm applying some blue ink just towards the center and now I'm applying some green ink around the edge. Notice while I'm inking our background, I'm also inking the die cut. So I'll be able to use both pieces in the end. That's one of the great things about a two for one technique like this one. Then when I remove it, you can see the beautiful inking I have. Now I'm coming in with the third die cut. So this is the bottom layer die cut. I skipped that first layer. We'll come back to that later. Now I'm applying the same inks, but heavier handed. So this layer, I will ink up much darker. So you don't need a bunch of inks for this technique. You just do light, medium, and dark, or in this case, medium and dark. Now when I remove that, you can see the detailed stenciling I have. But remember I skipped that first layer, the one with the most open area, the most detail. We'll come back to that. In my stash, I found a circle die that would cut this out nicely. I didn't mask around the edge, so I need to cut it out. You could instead have masked if you wanted to. Now I want to make an impression with a die onto our die cut. So I'm taking that second circle die, the one with all the detail on it and I'm lining it up with the inking we've already done. It's really easy to see through the openings to line it up. Once I have it lined up, I'll use little pieces of tape to hold our die cut to the center of that circle. Now we're making an impression with our die, just like I showed you before. I have our Spellbinders die cut machine, our embossing mat, the cardstock, the die, and the embossing plate on top. And that makes an impression with the die instead of cutting it. And look at that beautiful detail we get. Now remember there's the first die, the top one, that has the most openings that we haven't used yet. I die cut fr that from holographic cardstock and glued it on top. So there's only two layers here, but it looks like much more. Okay, now I have a white note card, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I have my background that I'm gluing right on top of it. That background is a light blue cardstock that I use the Birch Press Radial Pinpoint die on just to add some details. And now I'm gluing our circle element towards the top center. And then finally I do what I always do. I'm adding some little pearls on top that match our background. So these two colors are from Lucy's Cards. You can add little pearls or gems or little Nouveau drops, whatever floats your boat. Now I know that it adds a little bit of dimension to these, but the shine is definitely worth it. You could skip it if you want to, because remember, we used holographic cardstock for that die cut we put on top, so it does have a lot of sparkle already. I then added a You're the Best Ever sentiment from Concord and Ninth right across the center, and that's our card. So this one does have a bit of dimension because we put the holographic die cut on top, but all of the other color in that circle element is due to the inking that we added. Now honestly, this kind of card is my favorite to make. I got to use die cutting, I got to use inking, I got to use layering and stamping, and it came together very quickly and I can change it up simply by changing what I layer or what colors I use. This is what card making is all about to me. I can make lots of cards all a little bit different to send to as many people as possible. I will be sharing additional ways to use layered die cuts in my next video also. But let's do a few more here. This one again, I'm using the die cuts as stencils and then we'll make a layered die cut card also. Okay, for this one, I use the Birch Press Tranquility Layer Die Set. The cool thing about these three dies is it cuts a frame and then also a circle center. 
and you can use those layered dies either together or separately. Here's the frame die cuts together, and here are the circle die cuts together and in the center. So the option of using them together or separately really makes them more versatile, and I'll be showing you a lot of examples of that in my next video too. Now for this one, I'm starting with bigger pieces of cardstock. These are about five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, just so I can cut them down afterwards to whatever size I want. Now the top layer here that I'm taping on has one of these dies cut from it. So it's like my little stencil window. I'm first applying the first die cut and also a solid circle center, which I cut from a circle die. That way I'm just inking the frame only. Now this die cut happened to be the top layer, the one with the most open area, the one that would get glued on top if you were gluing the die cuts together. Over this, I'm applying a light amount of ink. It really doesn't matter which ones you start with, but I find starting with whatever would be glued top that has the most open area is the best to start with and apply the lightest amount of ink. So now I remove that, you can see my frame starting to build. I'm going to the middle layer next. This is the one with the little bit less area open. And I'm applying the same colors of ink, but a little heavier handed. This time I'm doing peach, orange, pink, and a purple color. You can apply any colors of ink that you want. This is a fun example for trying out new color combinations. After I've finished inking over that, I can put in the third layer. This is the one with the least amount of openings, the one that would be glued in the back of our layered die cuts. So you can see small openings on this one, and this time I apply the heaviest amount of ink. So over on the left there, you can see my ink die cuts. I can use those on another card by gluing them all together. All right, after I've finished inking over that one, I can remove the die cut, I can remove the center, and then I can remove the negative space, the stencil out that I had over it. Beautiful, smooth inked background. And I have these leftover ink die cuts that I used as stencils for a second card. All right, let's go back to this inked one where it's smooth. I'm rubbing a little bit of water on the back of it just so that it has some flexibility as we do in our impression with the die. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. So now I'm taking that die, the one with the most opening or the most amount of detail, and I'm lining it up with the inking we've done. I'll tape it in place, put it in our die cut machine with the embossing mat, and run it through how we normally would do to make an impression or emboss with a die. Again, just follow the instructions for your machine. So I'm doing this with my Spellbinders Platinum as I showed you earlier. And check this out, our die has made an impression instead of cutting. And look at the detail we added to that, including in the center where we don't have any inking. Now I can trim my background down to be whatever size I want. And I decided to make it so my inked portion is in the bottom right. I kept this card very simple. I trimmed the front down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and added it to a white note card of the same size. There you can see the embossed detail that we got by making an impression with the die. I also added some clear gemstones and a hug sentiment that's from the Honey Bee Biddy Buzzword stamp set and coordinating die set. You could add more to this card, but I feel like the color and the detail are enough and it's best to leave it as is. Now for our leftover inked die cuts, I created this card. I used two of the inked die cuts and then put a fresh white die cut on top. That way it kind of stood out a bit more. Now the background of this card is in ivory. It was nice to use the ivory cardstock behind this so the white die cut on the top and the white sentiment would stand out a bit more. I think we all too often forget about ivory or craft or light gray or black that we can use as alternatives to white cardstock. It really helps to make the white pop a bit more. By the way, that sentiment is from the Waffle Flower Sending Love stamp set, which is a great one with unique sentiments in it, and it fit perfect in that circle in the center of our inked layered die cut. Okay, I wanted to share a few more examples, a little bit different, but showing you how you can really change up the look of dies or die cuts by adding ink. 
Now in this case, I use just that basic butterfly die set that I showed you at the beginning. You have the outline, the detailed layer, and then some other layers that you can die cut and add behind it for additional color. And you also have the body of the butterflies. Well, in this case, I die cut those layer pieces. They're kind of weird looking, but I die cut them from solid colors of light cardstock. Now you can see those die cuts here. I have a light peach, a light pink, and a light yellow. I wanted to make these a little more vibrant, so I'll use ink and a blending brush. So if you have lots of colors of scrap cardstock and dies, just die cut from light colors of scraps and then add ink to them to really bring them to life. Notice how I'm using a really vibrant coral color over this, just towards the center. And it adds a lot of interest to that. That looks great with these layering die cuts. Now I just die cut the top layer from black cardstock, so it almost looks like an outline. So this is something that you could also do with your stamps. You could do a light color of cardstock and stamp on it and then add some dimension or look of dimension to it with a darker color of ink and a blending brush. So I'm taking all these light colors of cardstock, adding darker color to it and just portions of it so that you have that look of dimension. So let's put this together. I have my black detailed outline butterfly and I'm gluing these inked die cuts behind it. You can see how they line up nicely. So I encourage you to look through your layered die sets or even your regular die sets. Sometimes if you just add a little bit of inking to a pale color of cardstock, you can bring these die cuts to life and look at that beautiful butterfly in the end. Now for a backdrop on these cards, I'm using the Birch Press Dazzle Mini Frame Layer Dies. Now I've used the full version of this in the past. I'll link to that video here. But I like these because they fit at the front and center of a card or you can stack two on top of each other or next to each other for a slimline card. And I'll show that in my next video. But I really like these as a backdrop and I thought they'd look good behind the butterfly. Now I want to add this layered piece to the center of our card. So I'm using these little tools that I bought off of Etsy. I call these my crafty corners. They come in a few different sizes. There are a few different ways you can use them. I used one earlier too. Now, the way that I like to use them as is just a tool to make sure I get something centered and straight on a card. So I'm putting glue on the back of this layered piece and then I'll glue it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. To make sure it's centered and straight, I'll use one of my crafty corners here. And by the way, these corners come with like some brown paper on them that you can remove so they're clear, but I left it on so you could see it better. So notice I just put it kind of along the corner on both corners just to make sure that it's evenly spaced and centered. It really works well for me. And again, there are many ways to use them and I'll show you in a future video too. Okay, so now that I have that layered white piece centered on our note card, I'm adding our butterfly, again using a strong liquid adhesive. And then for sentiment, I'm using that same ink on three here for you stamp set that I used earlier. And I stamped that with black ink on white cardstock and added it on top. I also added some white pearls, which are something new baubles from Trinity Stamps, to that layered die cut in the background. You can see the pinpoint die I used on the background too on the white note card. This is from Memory Box. I use this one a lot and I have in videos before. It just adds lots of detail. So you can see on here by adding ink to those light colors of cardstock on that butterfly, I was able to make it more vibrant and add more interest. And here is a second version of it too. They have a similar design, same stamp, same ink, same cardstock, same dies, but I just changed it up a little bit. Before we go, I have one more card for you. I'm using the same butterfly die set I just used, which isn't really a traditional layering die set, but wanted to show you that even a die set like this can be used for stenciling. And this time I added some sparkle embossing to it also. Okay, so again, I'm creating a stencil with the butterfly. And then I'm taping it temporarily onto the front of a piece of white cardstock. These are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm starting by applying a light amount of blue ink through that opening, just as a guide to start with. Now I'm die cutting the individual layering pieces in the die set, but I'm using the negative space as a stencil. I'm taping that on top, lining it up with what we already have, and applying a different color of blue ink over that. 
So this card will end up being blue, teal, and light green. So over this one, I'm putting kind of a vibrant blue, but again, making it darker towards the center. That's one of the great things about using ink over cardstock is you can get that little bit of variation in color. All right, so now we can create a little stencil from the other pieces. Now this die cuts four pieces in one. So it's hard to make a stencil out of one portion. So all I did was die cut it from cardstock and mask off the areas I didn't want. See, I'm masking off just one open area. And then I'll line that up on our butterfly. So this will ink up the bottom left portion of the wing. So I'm lining it up. And this time I will apply a teal color ink over it. So think about other dies that you may have that have a little bit of layering like this. You can do this stenciling technique where you create kind of stencils or masks from the different portions so you can create an inked image instead of a layered die cut image. And now I will do the same thing for the other portions of the wing. So this one is the bottom right portion of the wing which I'll also do in that teal color. Now it's time to do the top left portion of the wing. So I'm just masking off the other portions of this stencil. And this time we'll do the green ink. And then of course we'll do the right side of the wing too. So you could change up the look of this by maybe using a glitter glitz gel over portions or some crackle texture paste. There are many different products you can put over stencil. And in this case, you can put them instead over the negative space of your die cut. I decided to do all ink for this portion and for most of this video, but now I will put some heat embossing over our die cut stencils. So now I'm putting in the detail butterfly layer. And over this, I'm applying a heavier amount of inks that I used in the background just to make this area darker. You could totally skip this part, but I felt it was helpful in making sure that this portion of our stenciling stands out a bit more. Then when I'm done adding that heavy amount of color, I'm using an ink blending tool and Versamark ink and really generously applying Versamark ink over this opening. Now Versamark ink is a clear sticky ink. So basically we're making all of the open areas here sticky. So when we remove our little DIY stencils here and then add embossing powder only stick on that Versamark ink. This is Judikin's clear sparkle embossing powder. Any clear or clear sparkle embossing powder would work here. And I'll heat set that and now you can see those details in the butterfly stand out and also have some added sparkle. I also wanted to add to this an inked body. Instead of doing a die cut body, I'm using the negative space of the die cut as a stencil and applying a dark gray ink. And then I added Versamark ink and then added the clear sparkle embossing powder so it would sparkle too. So this is a completely different look, another way to use your dies that are normally meant for layering. So there is the final card. I trimmed it down and added it to a blue four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I added some clear gemstones to the butterfly wings and then stamped Thanks Sweet Friend from the Honey Bee Bitty Buzzwords stamp set that I showed you earlier. I do want to share one completed card that I made off screen. I ran out of time to share it here, but it's the exact same technique that I used at the beginning of this video with the butterflies. However, I used the Birch Press Delight dies. I used the three layers of die cuts as stencils, and I used light green, medium green, and blue ink over it. And look at those beautiful results. Very smooth. I didn't even make an impression with the die. All I did was add some little gemstones to it and a Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip across the center and added it onto a blue four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And by the way, this is what this same die set creates if you just did layering die cuts. On the right is the die cuts layered, and on the left is what it looks like when you just use them for stenciling. I hope you'll try this technique because it's great for many reasons, one being that you can use your layered die cuts as stencils to create something smooth. Then you can use those inked die cuts to create a second card. Love to stretch those supplies and get multiple cards from them. If you're interested in the supplies I talk about here, they are linked below in my YouTube description, and you can click over to my blog where you have the ability to save cards for future reference or bookmark them. 
If you're interested in other layering dye videos, I have them linked here in the middle. And you know, I say it every time, but I really do appreciate you stopping by and watching this video. Hope you have a wonderful day and that you'll try some of these ideas.